Hey, thank you so much for spending the time today watching this video. My name is Emilio and we are looking at installing Windows Server 2019 onto a Synology NAS. Now you may have a small NAS, you may have a larger NAS, you may be doing this in a home environment, in a corporate environment. And the great thing is that you can install Windows Server natively, directly onto the Synology NAS. You don't have to go and install it in a VMware environment or in a Microsoft Hyper-V environment uh, and have that running as a host. And then you just perhaps use your Synology as some storage. No, you can actually run, not only just host it, but you can run Windows Server 2019 right on your Synology NAS. It's really, really cool. Absolutely love this. And I love that Synology, uh, that the NAS itself allows you to do this. So we're gonna be looking at that today. Please do check it out and uh, do click on that button and on the subscription bell so that you don't miss out on any of my videos. All right, so we are logged in. Here we are, this is our Synology NAS. Now I am running a Synology NAS that is quite new and has some good resources built into it. Uh, now, of course, you're going to need to be very considerate of where you're going to be installing your VMs um, because if you don't have enough resources, if you don't have enough CPU, enough RAM, if you don't have enough um, hard drive space, and you're going to have some trouble uh, running this and running this well. Um, you may be doing this in the demo at home. You could be doing this in a corporate work environment. So just keep that in mind. The newer the, the Synology, the more resources, the more enterprisey, I guess the more powerful your Synology is, the better because that lets you run more VMs. Um, and even if you're gonna run just one, it actually lets you allocate more resources to the VM. Because what you're gonna be doing is you're going to be using some of the resources that are built into your Synology NAS and sharing them with the virtual machine that we're gonna be building. So if your Synology NAS has um, you know eight gig of RAM inside of it, then you're gonna be borrowing a portion of that to allocate to the VM that we're gonna be building. Uh, so then your Synology NAS may run slightly slower because some of the resources have been allocated out to the virtual machine. So just keep that in mind very, very upfront. So here we are, we're logged in. Um, log in, you need to log in ideally as an admin, um, which is what we have done. We've logged in as an administrator. And the great thing about Synology is that you actually have some software that you can go and download from the package center to actually allow you to install virtual machines, any sort of virtual machine, which is brilliant across a whole bunch of operating system versions as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up package center first and foremost right here. And uh, what I'm gonna do is in here under search, I'm just gonna look for virtual and type in enter. And you see the hit right here, virtual machine manager, okay? Now, do remember that um, you need to be running a relatively new version of the, um, the actual Synology software. If it doesn't show up, it could be because you're running an older version or because the app store is not up to date. Um, but if it does show up, great. And if it shows up, we click on install uh, and that will actually install the virtual machine manager software. So your NAS will need access out to the internet. Otherwise you can go and download the virtual machine manager software and do a manual install and then point it to that installer. Or you can do it directly from the internet, which is what I'm doing right here. Okay, so we'll let that do its thing. Uh, that is installing. And then once it's finished, of course that will now show up. Okay, so that's finished, it says open, but you can also click up here and then you'll see that virtual machine manager here is listed. So we can go ahead and open that up. And here we are presented with a wizard. Now this is the very first step and what we're gonna be doing here is selecting the volume to be used as storage for virtual machines and check if the host settings are suitable for running virtual machines. Essentially it's just two first steps that you need to do before we can even start talking about building uh, a virtual machine which is what you see right here. So we're gonna select next and uh, here's a few things. Um, there's a, a vSwitch, ARP, there's storage stuff, there's compute stuff that essentially is just a prerequisite that needs to be run on your NAS to make sure that it is eligible to allow it to run virtual machines. Now, in my case, you'll see that these two first ones are already enabled and these next two are eligible. Now, if you have some of these that are not eligible or they're disabled, uh, you need to go and get that working first, enable them. Uh, disable them if they, sorry, enable them if they are disabled and make them eligible if they're not eligible, if they're ineligible. Um, but sometimes if they are not good for you, 
um, you may not be able, you may not be able to run a VM on your uh, NAS, which is a real disappointment um, because you're watching this video for that purpose. So you may be running an older version or one that is not compatible for this. But just because it um, it is ineligible, sometimes you can still get around it. But generally, I'd recommend make sure that all of these look okay. Then the next step is now to select the volume. So of course, you've got your NAS. Your NAS is made up of all of your disks inside of your NAS that are made into volumes. Now you could have one volume where all your disks are compressed and made into one big pool, one big volume, or you could have multiple volumes on your NAS already configured. Uh, if you're the storage admin, if you're looking after this, uh, you probably already know how that's been set up, but you now need to select the volume where your virtual machines, uh, where your virtual machine is going to be living, where is it physically going to sit? So in my case, I've just got the one volume, and I've got more than enough uh, available space. Of course, you'll need to have available space to be able to do this. So if that's the volume that you want, great. We can now click on next, uh, and that is really it. So it'll do a little bit of stuff in the background. Um, get that uh, environment ready, at least the hard drive space, creating some virtual allocated space for this and then we should have a big tick. If yours does not have a tick, we may to, you may need to do some troubleshooting and try that again, finish. Now that is it, okay? So the first thing we've done is we've now got the host ready to go. Now traditionally, when we're talking about virtualization, uh, you've got VMware ESXi, you've got a server that's made into a host, you've got Hyper-V, which is Microsoft one, it's made into a host. Here, we've just made our Synology NAS into a host. So it's acting as a host or it's acting as a server you see that there are no virtual machines set up and the storage is the volume that we just created. And here is our volume with the space uh, around my volume. Uh, here is, this is my NAS. This is called Aguero Synology. And you'll see that it shows me some stats around how much percentage use right now my CPU and my RAM and my LAN is currently using. So up and down, as well as um, the percentages of RAM and CPU. So you can already see that right now, I've got, um, it's not too busy. My CPU and my RAM is pretty good, so I could build some VMs and I should be okay. Now, the first thing you need to do is you now need to get yourself your Windows Server 2019 ISO. That's the very first thing you need to do. You need to have a copy of that ISO to actually be able to install and use that um, ISO within a VM. So I do have another video that you can go check out on how to download that ISO. It is completely free for you to download from the Microsoft website for you to try it. Then you will have to go and purchase it and get yourself a license key for that. So get yourself that ISO. We're assuming that you have the ISO and that you have got it uh, available on here. I've got a couple of uh, VMs under virtual machine. I've got a, a CentOS server, which is uh, a Linux, as well as an Ubuntu server, which is Linux as well. And uh, of course, now we've got ourselves a Windows Server ISO. We need to get that ISO into here. Uh, and what I generally would do is I would upload it via the file station going into here and then actually saying upload and creating a specific folder that is relevant for all of your ISO management. Uh, then we need to go and create a new VM and then you just point to the ISO file, which is your Windows Server uh, ISO there as well, okay? Now, um, we're gonna click on create right here. And you've got a couple of options around Windows. Uh, Windows or Linux, we're gonna select Microsoft Windows right there. This is the hard drive that we're using. Uh, of course, this is what we configured just before, making sure that we've got enough availability that we do. And of course, you can go and um, create your own storage versions. If you have a much larger NAS, create multiple versions and you can actually have your VM sort of sitting across different areas. Now we give our VM a name. So this particular one is going to be used for a DNS server. So I'm gonna say it's a, um, uh, I'm gonna say EA, DNS prod 02. Okay, that's just what we're gonna be calling it. Uh, now CPU and memory, now we're doing this just for a demo purpose and because I'm running a free version of our uh, Synology NAS software, our virtual machine manager, I'm limited as well as that, I'm limited on my NAS resources so I can't go and create something that's high end around CPU and memory. But of course, you're gonna to need to create a, if you're going to create a Windows Server VM, you're going to need resources for that. Enough CPU, enough RAM to be able to allocate to it. Um, otherwise, it's going to run very, very poorly. But of course, the more resources you do allocate to that Windows Server, then the slower your NAS could perform. So just for my demo, I'm going to give it one CPU and one gig of uh, 
memory, just so that I can start to install everything, set it up, and then later on I can come back, I can shut down that VM and I can actually increase CPU and memory later on. If you do have enough capacity, if you are uh, running a version that allows you to have a lot more resources, go and do that right here. But I'm just gonna leave that as the default. Video card, leave that as is as well. How big do we want your virtual disk to be? So this is now the C drive of our Windows Server. Uh, obviously give it enough capacity now so that later on you don't have to increase it, but you can go and increase it later on and give it more hard drive space later on. So for now, we're just gonna say an 80 gig hard drive and select next. We're gonna use the default network, which is the default network that we've configured by default uh, when Virtual Machine Manager was being set up and that will use the network points and the configuration that is connected to your Synology NAS right now. All right, now this is the point where uh, it's gonna ask you to go and download um, the guest tool. Now what this does is it essentially allows better compatibility between your Windows installation and your Synology NAS. So we're gonna start downloading it, but essentially once you've installed it, um, to have better compatibility between the virtual side of things and the actual window side of things, this tool just helps better compatibility between the two. So you don't have to go and do this, but you will find that it works better uh, in a virtual environment, Windows will, if you do download that tool, okay? Now you see that it has downloaded it, just go, it has to go out to the internet to get it, so make sure that you do have an internet connection available, and it's thrown it right into here. Additional ISO file, that is the uh, guest tool that's just been installed. And you'll see that the very top area, ISO file for backup, for boot up, sorry, is uh, unmounted. So now we go and select that Windows Server ISO that we were talking about. This is the one that you've downloaded. So we're gonna go and browse. Um, I've got all of my ISOs listed under applications under here. And under there, I've got Windows Server 2019. That's it right there. So I'm gonna select my ISO and select. And you see that that is now listed with my full path. We're gonna leave the rest as the default, including our BIOS being um, the default. So we're gonna use the legacy BIOS and we leave everything as is. So as long as that's mounted, that is good. We can now select next. This is now, who do you want the, uh, the I guess have permissions for this, for this particular VM. So to be able to power on, off, restart the VM, change settings, things like that. Who's the user? Now, in my case, I've just got the one user. I'm also the administrator. If you're doing this in a larger environment, you have multiple users, you may have a different structure. So go and add the relevant credentials and the permissions that you need for the people who need to use it. Okay, summary of what's going on, then we say apply. All right, so here is the VM. The VM has now been created. It's ready to go. You can see a summary of what is going on. Okay, that's the virtual disk. This is the network that we've allocated and a bit of a summary of them here. Of course, these are all set to zero right now because the VM is currently powered off. So now the next step is now to go and power it on. So we select it and we select power on right up here. Once that powers on, you'll see that this little connect button will become available for you to click on so that we can actually now open up a separate window to actually see what is going on. Now this is a good step. The fact that it's loading some files means that it has found your ISO, it's actually mounted it, and it's booting from the ISO. If this was not there, if you had say, a, you know, disk not found or insert or something um, around the ISO not working, um, you have to go back and sort of check out some, some stuff, right? You may have downloaded an incorrect ISO, it could be corrupted, um, the ISO could may not be bootable, um, or there was something that uh, was done on the actual setup uh, of the VM, uh, maybe not mounting it correctly, not pointing to the right location. So just be aware of that. Uh, but if you're at this screen and it's loading the files, you are good. So now we're presented with a standard window setup. Everything is loaded. We're really, really happy. So you can go and change everything that you so choose to. I'm gonna go and change my actual time and currency because I'm not from around here. I'm from Australia. If you can tell from my dodgy accent, we can click on next and select install. And now the basic installation uh, begins. We'll have to do a little bit of config. So you'll have a couple of options available. Um, this particular, these two will not have a uh, GUI. Um, it will all be command line, but we're gonna select a data center evaluation, which is the desktop experience. So it does actually have a GUI installed with it. 
because we like that, uh, especially with Windows. Um, I accept the license terms if you're happy with that. We're gonna select custom. And here is our disk. This is the 80 gig disk that we have installed. That was the one that we set up. So 80 gig should match up the quantity that you actually allocated. Uh, so you're happy, you can create new partitions if you so want to right there. Next, and now the installation begins. It's gonna start to do copy files uh, and then do everything else that it needs to do. Um, and then the installation will complete and we we'll can actually log in. So after a bit of time, the installation will complete. Here we are. Uh, we have finished the restarts multiple times of your Windows server. Now, if you did get stuck anywhere during the restart process or it's saying boot from hard drive or something like that, I find that it's generally a couple things. It's either that the, um, the ISO is still mounted, but other things you can do is just shutting down the VM completely, starting it up again, and then the installation will continue. I actually had to do it a couple of times. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So just be aware of that. But now you're presented with the login screen where you have to um, essentially set your administrator password. So go ahead and create your password for this Windows server. And now we can just do a control or delete to get into there. Throw in your password for your administrator. Now the very last thing that you need to do is now you need to install those uh, virtualization tools that um, we looked at downloading earlier and that we mounted as an ISO earlier um, when we were setting this, uh, this thing up. So that's gonna ensure that there's better compatibility between your Windows Server 2019 and your uh, Synology VMware environment. Logged in, here's our server manager, which is sort of what's gonna open up by default. Uh, and then within Windows Explorer, File Explorer, uh, our eDrive is here mounted as the Synology VM tool. So you can sort of right click and you can say auto run this, uh, or you can just sort of open it and then double click on the uh, guest tool. And then really just follow the prompts, yeah? It's very, very straightforward. Uh, essentially, it's gonna install any necessary drivers, compatibility things between those two. Let that go through, it'll restart. You can then shut down your VM and you are done. That's it, thank you so much for sending the time. As always, please like, comment, subscribe, clicking on that bell for all of my latest video releases. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time.